my litmus test of if I'm having a good time with a piece of gear is if I can just kind of forget what's happening. And I think you just witnessed that happening in real time. Hey, what's up? Daniel here with Slow Haste. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Donner B1 bass synthesizer. Before I get started, I want to let you know that Donner did send me the B1 to check out, but I do have the final say of the actual content of this video, and all the thoughts I'm going to express are my own. Speaking of that, there are so many reviews on this little synth out there, and of course I'm happy to be able to add my two cents into the pot too, but I wanted to take a bit of a different approach with this review. One focus of this channel is trying to showcase my actual music and showcase gear that I feel really passionate about that I feel like is compatible with my own music that I would use day to day. So after having spent some time familiarizing myself with the interface of the B1, I decided I'm just gonna kind of play around with this thing, make some pretty sounds, some of which might not be exactly what you'd expect out of a 303 style synth, and just to talk about what I'm doing when I feel like it kind of applies to the workflow. I'm gonna put a bunch of the specs of this below in the description and link the product, which by the way, I don't get commissions from. I just want you to be able to use it as a resource to look at the specs while you listen to this review and see if you wanna purchase it for yourself. I'm also super happy to answer any questions about this that you might have down in the comments. I'll try to talk through what I'm doing and might put some text on the screen as well, but I really want this to be a music first showcase of the synth and show off some of the different sides of a 303 style synth that you might not expect. Got a nice soft square wave sound here with the cutoff turned down pretty low. No resonance or depth to the filter. The filter is really interesting. It's not what I'm typically used to on an analog style synth, but you can turn up the resonance and then the depth will basically create modulation within that. And these obviously interact some delay on that patch too. Anyways. Reaching on that acid territory. That's what this type of synth is really meant for. And it does it well too. But it works really well with like, you know, a textural ambient kind of group too. And the built-in delay is just like, I don't know, I wish it got a little bit louder, but listen to the difference that makes. It just adds so much rhythmic, I don't know, variance and excitement to a pretty simple arpeggio. And this sounds just as good even better in my opinion, when it's really nice and softened. That was a nice solid 90 I landed on. That's what I was going for.
Again, we have the delay timed here to give us some rhythm. And I actually really like this pitch control too. It's notched in the middle too, so you can find home really easily. It's also really nice and easy to control for a nice pitch delay, or I'm sorry, pitch modulation. I really like playing with the arpeggiator. You can, of course, use it without the hold, but I like using it with hold. Get some nice arcadey sounds out of this thing. Yeah, I really like uh, the fact that you can use the hold key to kind of extend the envelope for the full value, whereas if the hold key is not on, the release immediately cuts all the way off. But when you hold it, it responds to the decay knob. What's really cool is if you play a sequence and hold the accent button, it only accents while you're holding. But I kind of prefer messing around with the arpeggiator. string-like sound, like a pluck. Even with simple three-note arpeggios like this, like, This seems really simple, but I feel like this is a loop I could get super lost in and add a beat to.
smooth and buttery to me. You can buzz it up all nice like. And the drive on this has like a very uh, feedback like quality. It sounds like pitched feedback in a way that I think is really sick. I'm really excited to just kind of sample bursts of sounds. One criticism I have is how much the volume jumps with the accent knob. And that's not just like a perceived volume thing with overtones. Like my volume is jumping quite a bit. So that's something to be mindful of when you're playing with this. I think this is a great, really simple little synth that, at least for me, has a, a workflow that's much different from what I'm used to, and I find myself pulling some surprising things out of it because of that. I think it's a great budget option if you want like a mono bass synth to add to your rig, and it could be cool for kind of learning a different workflow from a typical subtractive synth style. Also, just listen to the decay of the delay. It has like a nice kind of like analog quality to it with a, a little bit of a high pass filter on, on the delay trail.
I always say my my litmus test of if I'm having a good time with a piece of gear is if I can just kind of forget what's happening, um, get lost in it. And I think you just witnessed that happening in real time. Yeah, I've been having a really good time with this thing. And I haven't really been exploring <laughs> that many of the features, which is funny. Because I just have kind of been getting lost in, um, in the arpeggiator. especially in really smooth sounds like this. It's a little bit of that filter envelope, which is effectively what that depth knob is. It's basically an envelope on the filter. Just listen to that though. simple but it's buttery smooth and it works you know I'm glad I have like 30 minutes of this audio recorded because I'm gonna sample the hell out of this but, like these really soft sounds It just, it sounds, it really sounds good, which is, at the end of the day, what you want out of something like this. Um, the only other real criticism I have is, I wish it was battery powered. I mean, I guess to be fair, I wouldn't necessarily be bringing just a, like a mono bass synth slash arpeggiator anywhere with me, but um, just the size of it, I thought it was funny that I had to plug it in. But as a little synth in the corner of your studio that you can just hop on and pluck something out, I think it's really great. Let me know what you think about this thing. It's been on the scene for a little bit now, and it's been a lot of fun getting to know it and play with it. Thanks again to Donner for sending this my way. And hey, if you had a good time and liked this video, feel free to check out my Patreon. I have some different tiers there where you can sign up for lessons or get some sample packs and music. And also, if you want to drop a line, head over to my Instagram, at slowhaste. So that's patreon.com slash slowhaste and at slowhaste on Instagram. Thanks as always for hanging out, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.